estate agent? Are you looking to acquire clients consistently so you can grow your business and your income to live a great lifestyle? This is Dave Finale and the RE Skill Builder Podcast. Well, hello, everybody. Here we are. Episode 121 of Real Estate Talk TGIF. And this is 119 weeks in a row. Can you believe that, man? So, Dude, man. I uh, uh, I get the pleasure of working with someone every every day, shoulder to shoulder. Um, I get the opportunity to learn and to have him share in my coaching experience, whether I'm being <laughs> coached by him or he's coaching with me or I'm coaching him or whatever. And it is such a pleasure to have Sekou Pyle, the director of growth at the DeVoe Group, but who I call the king of dialogue in the United States in the real estate world. Saiku, welcome, and thanks for coming on today, man. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, I've got uh, the, the, the kids in the background, and, you know, they're, they're homeschooling and, and everything, so uh, it, it's the reality of live TV. Uh <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man, this is, this is what we've been living for a while, but you know what? I mean, you know, a lot of us understand how it is to work from home or work virtually, and like I've told you, and we've talked many, many times, I mean, I've been, I've been teaching it for a long time, just couldn't get the buy-in, and now we got the buy-in. So I want you, if you would, for just just a, a little bit, tell people, you know, your story, where you're, you know, how you got to where we are today, where I'm calling you the king of dialogue. So people need to understand what that means. So just Yes, sir. You go, go, I, I got you covered. I, I tell you what, man, I, I have been doing this for a very long time. Maybe, maybe, Maybe not as long as everyone, man, but uh, uh, th the last 20 or so years, man, we've, we've been putting numbers up on the board and and really moving the, the, the real estate needle along. Uh, probably about maybe 15 years ago, uh, I started scripting and getting coached in the industry. And, and I, I was I was just resistant to it, man. I, you, you could not. Get me to sit still long enough to 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 coach right and report my numbers and everything like that. Um, but then, like like I, I, a good friend of mine, this guy named Jamie Daniels, um, he he sat me down and he was just like, you know, say you're resistant to the scripts. He's like, why? And I'm like, oh, because they don't sound like me. They don't sound like something I would say. They you know they they sound impersonal. They sound robotic. And Jamie was like, dude, the whole point of the scripts is that it doesn't sound like you, that you sound like the people that you're talking to, the people that you're reaching. Um, and, and it wasn't like it was Cinderella, man, but he gave me a, a little hint. And so you like to call me the king of dialogue and the, 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 the conversations and things like that. I tell you right now, man, for me, it's just a formula. It's a formula that says uh, I'll script like a robot and respond like a human. And I got that from Jamie, man, and it, it is, it's like saved my, my, my whole scripting and dialogue and career, man. I, uh, I, I get to work with some of the best agents in the world, uh, and something that, that you and I were talking about the other night on your scripting and dialogue page, man, where it's like you're not practicing the scripts to be better at real estate. You're practicing the scripts to earn a million dollars. You're practicing earning the 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 money that you want to make and you're practicing the career that you you want to be perfect at. Yeah. So so I want to I want to take what you just said and I want to segue into we got two real topics we like kind of pointed to today. One is about the real estate brokerage business model. The other is about the coaching business model. So as you say that right, I want I want to go into that and we look at the coaching that you know you and I do and it's a little bit different than than is typical. I mean a little bit. We have our set stuff that we want to do, but you know we're not going out there and say, "Hey, do this thirty-day challenge and yeah, jump no. bridge, and this way you get eight listings or get thirty listings in thirty days." You know, we will talk to people about getting listings. We will talk to people about getting business, but we're not talking about here. I'm doing a handling objection uh, 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 Zoom call today. You know, yeah, no. No. We don't even handle objections. We don't even. I mean, <laughs> I feel, I mean, we believe that. We, go ahead, talk about that. We, 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 we believe that you're not getting objections unless you're in front of the person. You got to right. ask for the, the 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 thing in order to be rejected or or get an objection for it. Um, 
the, the talk about breaking the industry and talk about breaking the coaching industry. You know, it, it strikes me that the difference between what we're doing and some of the other coaching companies that, that I actually admire, I admire all of the, 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 the good coaches out there. There are a lot of great, great, great programs and things like that. The, the, the challenge that we have as a coach is, is we often meet people who expect us to teach them how to walk, teach them how to do business, teach them how to sell, teach them how to do this and that and the other thing. Okay. And that's just not the role. It's not the role of the coach. It's not even the role of the trainer, to be honest with you. But I would say that that was more the, the role of the trainer. The role of the coach is to shave seconds off of your time is to shave strokes off of your your swing or whatever golf reference you have is to add runs to your to your swings and and yards after contact it it is it the essence of it is the coach is working with you to hone your skills to perfect your skills right but deeper than that and I'm going to be honest with you none of it works None of it works unless you're doing what we're doing. And that's holding the person accountable. Exactly. So, so, so I like to look at that. I, I, very simple. Let's, let's just define the two terms. Training is teaching skills. Coaching is enhancing skills. And the one thing yes, that's missing here that nobody understands, and, and you and I get this, and I talk about this more than anybody, is there has to be a bridge between the training and the coaching. And that's honing mm -hmm. skills. That's what that is. So that's where the trainer and the coach come together where the trainer is there as you're doing push-ups, he's there at your head. Another one, do another one, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so he's pushing you along. That's where the bridge is built through accountability, where the coaching is more accepted, right? Because look, uh -huh. how, many people, how many people spend thousands of dollars on coaching and don't get shit out of it? And don't, don't, don't do any of the activities, never show up to your sessions, uh, uh, don't report your numbers. And then the conversation is like, oh, well, I didn't get anything out of this. What? Right. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? What I tell people is that if you want something out of it, you got to do the work. They say, well, is your program guaranteed? The only thing that's guaranteed is that you will do the business if you do the work. If, if you, you do, do the work. If you do the assignments. If you do your guidance. If you do or guiding you through, you will do the business. If you don't do the work, it's not, it's not freaking magic. You know, it's not right. hire Dave or hire Sekou and you're going to automatically start doing business. No, you have to do the magic. You have to make the magic. Excuse me. And you it make the magic. I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a photo right now because I want to remember this moment right in the future. Right. Because, see, the thing is, is that what you just said is transformative. What you just said if the agent has the ability to be self-reflective, if the agent has the ability to, to truly become the owner of their company, to become the CEO of their business, then what you just said is probably going to have the greatest impact on their growth. It's their ability to, to check in on their business consistently enough so that they can figure out what's working, figure out what needs work, figure out what they're doing and figuring out what needs needs doing, what needs to be done. Right. And, and that's, and that's why, you know, I say that we do things differently because um, part of my coaching and part of everything that we do is what you just said is this old expression that I was taught when I first got in first first got my brokerage was you make you need to make sure that you inspect what you expect right yes not just for the broker and the agents or the broker and the manager or the corporate regional guy to the everybody it's for the individual themselves as agents what do you expect of yourself you know the other night the other night I was going through my 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 in my in my live at five on Monday I was talking about commitment right and as i this is this is like a revelation under myself is I'm, I'm i'm talking about the four c's of commitment and i'm talking about one of the it's, it's one of my, my 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 things i love to talk about 
And I always think about when I'm coaching someone and talking to someone, it's how am I reflecting it myself? How am I reflecting what I'm right. talking about in my own life, in my own business, right? So I said, your, com your results are measured, your commitment's measured by your results. So I thought about that. I have to inspect what I expect of myself. And I had a rude awakening. And this has happened over the past few weeks. My results, which personally, honestly, I mean, I'm never happy with. I always do. Right, I right, 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 right. You know? So it's like, oh, shit, I just said that. And as I'm doing this in the session, I'm saying, holy shit, I know what I got to do later. You know, so it's an inspection of what you expect. And, 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 and it's you, being the CEO, the chief cook and bottle washer. Of yes, your sir. <laughs> yes, you know sir. What I, mean? I mean, I take out the garbage in my business. How about you? I do. I take out the garbage. And, uh, uh, you, you know, there's an analogy. I don't know if this is an analogy, but I'm going to call it an analogy, okay. right? Uh, uh, you, if you equate your business to a body, to a human being, right? And you sort of break down the function, right? So your brain sort of perceives the things, you know, it's, it's got the big ideas. It's the brain, right? You don't, you don't, if you if you don't have your head up your butt, you're not thinking with your tushy, you're thinking with your brain, right? So, so your CEO, your CFO, all the people that put together the image of your business is right here in your head. Correct. The heart and soul, the lifeblood of your entire company is your heart, right? The salesperson, the right. salesperson keeps the entire company afloat. I don't care what it is you're, you're doing, what service you're providing. You have to provide that to the consumers. Right. And a lot of times the, the salesperson s spends too much time thinking and not enough time acting and doing. The heart never stops, right? The heart is always working. Right. And so you get these people that are constantly planning, constantly getting ready, constantly getting ready, never really executing. It's all in their head. And, and they develop the same kind of business. That's somebody that never thinks about the business, that never thinks about planning right. because they never take action. So right. in my body, I, it, it's, it's the action that you're taking. It's, 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 yes, you're the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, right? You, you have to take action on your business. What we keep saying in our coaching is you got to make a mess. You have to. You got to make a mess. And then, then to coin your phrase, you clean up to progress. Right. And that's been some of the most powerful stuff that we've had to deal with in the last few few months. Right. So so we, we talk about the difference in coaching. We talk about the coaching model not being what it was where and, and, mm -hmm. and, and you said it. And I want to say it, too, is I have the, the utmost respect for all the great coaches out there. I've, I've, I've hired many of them and worked with many of them and have the utmost respect. And I believe what they're doing works. I just think that there's other ways that we can do it and what we've been doing. So I want, I want you to uh, talk about, you know, some, some differences that you've been pushing forth in the agents that you coach and the results you've been getting. Talk about that. I, I, I have been an ogre when it comes down to a production and the expectation of production and things like that. Right. I, I, the, the excuses that most people give is, you know, they're not ready. They don't know enough yet, et cetera, et cetera. One of the major things, one of the major differences that, that I've been doing with the agents in our universe, in our, in our, in our cipher is I, I, I don't want them to know everything. I, I would rather them be a know nothing agent. I would rather them approach this business from the perspective of resources they have versus information that's just locked in their head that they're just going to spew out. Right. Um, the, 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 I think the greatest trans transgression of this business is not listening to your, your market, not listening to your clients and customers. Uh, when you're not listening to your clients and customers, when you're not listening to the, to the business, um, what winds up happening is that you wind up walking down a road by yourself that no one is else, no one else is going to be on. So you right. think you're setting a trend, but in fact, you're just you're wandering away from the herd, and and you know it's not going to serve you anything. If you begin to listen, if you're a know nothing agent, and you really begin to listen 
to the market. You really begin to listen to your customers and clients. You begin to be curious and ask questions. You get to lead the herd. Right. You get to lead the pack. Right. And I think that, that, that where we spend most of our time in coaching is teaching them how to be leaders teaching them how to be leaders in the industry, teaching them how to be leaders in their business, teaching them how to be leaders with their customers and clients. And being a know nothing agent, I think I think in my opinion is the way to go. No, I, I think you're absolutely correct. I mean, one of the things we see so predominantly in our industry is that we see agents copying other agents. And what do I mean by that? It's it's really simple, right? So you have new agents coming in the business and everybody says, you know, find a top agent and emulate yep. what they do, copy what they do. Here's the problem is that there's so much noise out there in our space, in our industry, in our real estate space, that they think one person is really good because they're boasting, but they actually suck. Yep. And, and they're copying the crap that they're doing. And I see it with my mentees and I, I see it with other people that the, the you don't follow the 80 or the 90%, you follow the 1%, the 5%, right? You know, um, you know, the, the 1% is not really caring what the 99% do. You know, it's like, it's like I saw a great post. Um, I saw a great post by my friend, John Chep, Like It said something like, um, you don't need a plan. You just need to stick to the plan. Yeah. You don't need a new plan, that's it. You stick to the plan, right? Yeah. And that's what we as coaches do. We, we, we plan out what is necessary in a certain process, in a certain group of whether it's weeks or sessions or whatever, or modules, whatever it is. And it's like, it's almost like what we're trying to do has a lot to do with, uh, I use, I, I love this analogy, the karate kid method of coaching, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Paint the fence, wax the car, <laughs> but whatever it is. Right. So what does this, what does this have to do with karate? What does this have to do with fighting? You'll figure right. it out. You'll find and, out. And then what happens is they go on a presentation or they get on the phone and all of a sudden their body language is different. Their shit's coming out of their mouth that they can't believe is coming out of their mouth and it works. Hey, it's happened to me. I've had holy crap moments where something came out of my mouth and I said, wow, that's good. <laughs> you know? I can't believe I said that. Right. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? I, 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 it, what, what we're doing, right? So, so, you you made mention of a of of the one percent, right? You made mention of the eighty percent or the ninety percent, right? And and how we should be following the one percent. So so, it, if you had to, if if I had to sort of put my finger on a thing that is most frustrating and that makes me the most proud, it would be when agents ask me what to do or or when agents show up for coaching. And we tell them, well, this is what you do. You make 200 contacts a day. You set a minimum of four appointments. You ask for a contract every appointment you go on and you're gonna have an amazing business. And the thing that makes this frustrating is when agents go, no, I don't like that. I, I, ooh, that's not me, I can't do that. I don't wanna sound too pushy. Yeah. And you're like, well, you asked me what to do you know, in order to succeed, you asked me what to do you ask me what I do. You ask me and what 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 I see other successful agents do, and that's what that's what they do. And then the thing that makes me the most proud in the same sentence, right? When I say you gotta make two hundred contacts a day, set a minimum of four appointments a day, ask for a contract on every appointment you go on. When you watch those people go out and fail, when they go out and they 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 set their mind to doing two hundred contacts, they set their mind to doing four appointments, they set their mind. To, to asking for a contract and they come back and ask questions like this. I have been doing this for X amount of days or weeks and these are the results that I keep getting. What am I doing wrong? Why do I keep failing? There is a sense of pride there. My pride in that person that I know has been doing what other people are not willing to do in order to succeed. That is the more successful agent. The more successful agent is the one that fails the most. Yeah, well, you know what, what? What's interesting? Exactly. So, you know what's interesting is that I I, I use it as a, as a base point of my coaching, and, and you talk about it. And I call that the art of differentiation. I mean, yes, it's really simple. The art is simple. Just do what others refuse to do. Don't copy. Just listen to shit. You know. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll never forget 
uh, five years ago or so, when I was really getting into the virtual world and helping people get virtual, um, I said to an agent, I talked to an agent about, you know, do virtual, go out and, 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 and do videos of all the homes you're going to show. Someone wants to see eight homes, right? Well, eight homes on a Saturday, that's a lot of houses, right? Uh. <laughs> what I want you to do is you want to show them the eight homes? Good, you do that. So you go out tomorrow and you go videotape all the homes with your opinion. You send them the videos and say, okay, which two or three do you really want to see? Because five of them are going to suck no matter what. And says, oh, that's a great idea. Hour later, I go over go over to this person's desk. I say, what's going on? He says, well, you know, I got somebody that, that, that I got to do those eight homes. I said, oh, really? Okay. So you went out later on to start those videos? He says, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I said, mm. you just told me how great an idea it was, and you're not going to do it, right? Now, I believe that that person I'm talking about is going to be in the 20, 10% eventually, right? Of course. Um, because that person is willing to do the work. But the, the, the acknowledgement of a great idea is, is not nothing. differentiation. The actual right. action step. It's like the heart and soul. Commitment, action steps, and perform everything, right? You've got to cap, maybe. And that's where and that's where the difference comes in. That's where the art of differentiation comes in. Hey, you know what? Be the different person. Be the one out there that you know what? Here's the thing. Act like a toddler because they don't give a shit who's watching. They're gonna be like, why? But why? How come? How come I can't? What's this? Why is that? I want to tell and it, and it, it's, it's, it's all exploration for them. And it, everyone loves it. Yeah, right. it's, you know what? Your, your kid asks you the same question 20 times. It's going to get frustrating. But you know what happens? That as a parent, you wind, you try to figure out how to answer that question once and for all for that kid, right? right. You, you, you mentioned, right? So you mentioned the good idea and then the lack of ex execution of that idea, right? You give somebody a great idea and there's a lack of execution. Do, do you know that what I'm finding is that circumstances are often the thing that flicks that switch that you're always talking about, right? So I've been talking to agents about this virtual thing. Like we move over to eXp we're in the cloud and everybody's like, oh, that's cute. You got like a video game office, you know, <laughs> you know, right, right. Everybody's like, and it's novel. And it's, I said the same thing. We partied on the boat. Yeah. Oh, the pirate ship. And then Corona hits, COVID hits. And no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, the reality is, is that the world slowed down sometimes in some places to a stop. Right. But my business quadruple right and it, we took it the the marketplace sort of dictated the necessity for this virtual world and everyone that was like no i can't go out and do a video or i can't go out and do vr right there's no one that's going to buy a property virtually it's now do if if they've pivoted if they took action if they are the differentiation the art of differentiation and they right. they, they subscribe to that they're not doing five, six times the amount of business right? So from their desk. <laughs> so I spoke to about uh, 10 agents this week. Um, mm -hmm. And the majority of them, I'm going to say eight of them, um, stopped cold middle of March. And they say, oh, since June, it's been great. Well, what happened from March and May to, to you know, what happened there, right? Oh, you know, I talked to people. Okay, great. You talk to people. and and But here's the thing. And 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 in, in all fairness, it was just not the EXP model that the right. EXP that 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 was, did well. I mean, it was it was all of those agents. And let's face it. Okay, I, I want to go just take a step sideways here. Understand that in the nineties and two thousand to two thousand ten or so, after that there was a transition. And what I mean by that is that the brokerages were first; they were in front of you. Right. They were right next to you or right behind you, right? So when you went for a listing, you needed five yeses. Hope I can remember five, right? They needed uh -oh. a yes. you needed a yes to your company, a yes to you, a yes to your price, a yes to your commission, a yes to your marketing, right? You needed yeah. those five yeses. Guess what? what? You? <laughs> hey, guess what? It's now four. You need yeah. a yes to you, a yes to your marketing, yes to your price, yes to your commission. 
No longer is the company out front or right next to you or beside you. Okay, so it's your moniker, right? And, and that's it. We've had a transition over the last few years. So my point in getting to what you said is that the people that, that really did well were the ones, we can say the one percenters, the five percenters, the 10 percenters, they stepped up. There are also the people that were in the 80 that actually yep. saw, hey, shit, this is an opportunity and I have no problem doing video. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to take territory. Right. And we work with a lot of those people. Well, well, the, the thing is, is that like, and I'm going to say this and, and, and it falls right in line with the, the topic uh, that we're discussing. Marilyn, what's going on? Marilyn is one of those agents that embrace videos that that was getting she's getting tons of views. But 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 before I go there, right? So so uh, we're we're in an environment where things are broken. Right. right? Things are broken. Right. And what COVID did was showed us where the gaps in spaces are, right? right. It just right. showed us where the gaps in spaces are. Um we have agents who believe with all their heart that they that they are the magic ingredient to the movement and the of the market and things like that but when you put that whiteboard together when you write out a, a deal from soup to nuts and you really look at where you really have to be there physically those places are few and far between right and and what what makes this whole industry fragile right now is that we're stepping into a place where there's going to be less brokers yeah. necessary. There's going to be far less buildings necessary. Why, why am I, why am I spending all of the money that I could be spending on marketing? Why am I spending that money on a desk or why am I spending that money on the electric or, or on the, the coffee machine or something like that? Good morning is I see you. Right. So, all of that now could be focused on the client and customer. What's been broken for years is that we've been dividing our loyalty between the people we're, we're serving and our brokerages and, and, and making sure that everybody is paid on that side. So, so it's not let's, necessary. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the, the, the model of, of the brokers. And I'll use, I mean, look, I, no, no, no secret. I was a Century 21 broker owner for 20 yes, years. And real estate royalty. Thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> we, we, you know, we have to pay franchise fees and they, I got a, I, I, I have no problem with century 21. I have I had a great career with them. I made a lot of great friends. I learned an awful lot. They, we're, we're talking business now. It's not, we're not talking personally. Right. So, so their yeah. model was an 8% fee, right? 2%. They, they took the name around. It was, it was advertising or marketing and 6% yep. royalty. I think they now call the 2% a, a business development fee. So you look at that, right? Let's hold that on a side, right? And then we'll look at Cobalt Banker had 6%, other ones at 5%, right? Remax had nothing. Then all of a sudden they came 5% in the 2000s or late 90s, right? And then we look at, at the onset of the Keller Williams model. And let's just look at mm -hmm. it in New Jersey, how it, honestly, it exploded, right? It grew like crazy. And the question I would have to agents about this model of this brokerage is how much money is Keller Williams putting aside for marketing? Right. Hold your yeah. thoughts for a second and listen to the answer. <laughs> zero. There is no answer. It's zero. <laughs> so they went from like nothing to hundreds of thousands of agents or whatever it is, right? No marketing budget. So what the hell do we need the marketing budget for? So take right. away take away the idea of the other parts of that model and look at the broker's models, right? Um, it's based on, you know, I've got an office and I'm number one in this market as my, as the brokerage. And, and I treat my agents like this and I get you leads and all this other stuff. Uh, think about that, right? What really, if you look at it and I've talked, I talk to a lot of agents every week as you do. Right. And yep. the main theme of it is, you know, and, and I talk to agents in, in every brokerage, mostly. Yep, all me brokers, too. Right? And ones that are considered top in training. And I, I mean, just, just yesterday, I heard from a guy that said, you know what? I, they have all this training and I ain't getting shit. And then he says to me, it all seems really old, is it? 
<laughs> and I said, I said, what do you mean? And he explained to me. He says, yeah, well, that that was like, that went out with like in 2005, right? Well, the, the, can I, can I, yeah. in, in, in your point, the, the, the bigger, the grander point that I was going to, going to make, I don't, I don't want to say trying to make, but that I was going to make is that COVID hit and we did the whiteboard and we saw what was necessary and what was not necessary. Right. But more importantly, right. COVID hit and showed us that no one knows what the hell to do next. We've never lived through this as a market. That's right. All the speculation is based on something similar or another kind of tragedy or another this or another. No one, not one agent alive has lived through this market. That's right. And so going back to an earlier conversation about how coaching is broken and how coaching has changed, the, the concept of being a know nothing agent, the concept of just asking the questions of being there for your clients, customers, of really, really doing the research for them is the most important thing, man. It's the new ABCs of, of sales and of real estate. Attunement. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know me. I'm always, I'm going to go. ABCs, then I'm going to go into uh, something else. Attunement, buoyancy, and clarity. Attunement. How well do you connect with your customers and clients? Hey, everybody, write buoyancy. this down. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to what they're asking? Are you listening to what they're saying? Buoyancy. The market is going to fluctuate. There is no such thing right now as a buyer or seller market right now. Right now, the market is just, it is just a, a, a wave, right? And the last thing that you need to do is to worry about your commission or worry about your business in a market like this. How well can you stay afloat? How prepared are you is the question, right? And the last thing is clarity. There is nothing but information out there right now. You could you could Google something. YouTube University will tell somebody how to do something, right. whether it's right or wrong, whether the information is good or not. Right. How well do you curate the information that your clients and customers are getting? Right. And if you're not curating that information, if you're not finding the signal in all of that noise, then you are you're, you're a dinosaur and you're a thing of the past. And you're irrelevant. The, the, yeah, irrelevant. Thank you. And so, so the the brokerage model, the coaching model, the agent model, all three are broken. All three are broken. I just think that the agents have more tools to be more prepared. If you remember the uh, the army commercial back in the day, the army of one, right? Right. So, so the agent has all the tools necessary to be the army of one. All right. they have to do is now pivot and learn how to use them correctly uh, and have this know nothing agency so that they can they can build the trust in ABC. So so I want you to give me a 30 second blip on the first little uh, uh, little video I'm going to play having to do with <laughs> this type of um, coaching and content program. Talk about Sekucrem.com, man. Ah, uh, dude, man, it, it I, I met this 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 cat. Nick Krem, and he, he's without exaggeration, a master of content creation, uh, your social media feeds, your, your internet sensation stuff, your, your videos and things like that. Uh, and, and I met him, I, I wanted a video, I wanted a digital business card, right? Right. And he was like, yeah, I could do that. And he, he was done in like 24 hours and, and filled up my digital business card with all kinds of good stuff. So, uh, and so, we started talking and, and you know, I'm a dinosaur. So I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm a cold caller. I believe in calling people. I call hundreds of people a day. And he's like, man, that's just crazy. He's like, it makes me want to get back on the phones. And I'm like, wait, you were a cold caller? He's like, yeah, man, I, you know, I, I ran an ISA department. And I'm like, well, what are you doing with this content crap? And he's like, are you kidding me? And then he showed me the numbers and how many people he communicates with on a regular basis. And I was like, I want that. And he's like, well, I want the kind of instant interaction that your calls make. And he was like, I got an idea. And I'm like, yeah, well, I think we, we, I might be picking up what you're putting down. And we right. decided to do this thing called Sekou Creme that 
combines the best of both worlds. And to use his phraseology, it's a land, sea, and air approach to business generation in the 21st century. So when you when you see this program, it allows an agent, whether they're a brand new agent or whether they're a seasoned agent in this new market that no one knows anything about, it allows you to build business from a zero budget all the way up to a pay-per-click budget. And uh, I, I think it's highly effective, man. And I think that every agent out there should at least peek under the hood and, and get some of it, man. Check this out, man. Check this out. Man, I, I every time I hear that, like, I start jamming. <laughs> well, That's I, an example, man. That, that, uh, like, like that, it's just beautiful stuff, man. We do some crazy, crazy stuff at Seiku Cram. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, well, you know, I, I get excited. It's an example of 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 doing things, um, of moving forward, of evolving. Mm -hmm. Right. I like to use the word evolution and evolving. I mean, I think, I think. Everything in our lives is, is all about evolution, right? And, you know, like I heard you say different uh, ways of saying what I'm about to say is my dad always said, if you're not moving forward, you're moving in reverse, right? Yes, sir. If you're standing still, you're moving in reverse. I've, seen, I've heard you say something like that, right? And yeah. then if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. Seku Krem and real estate skill builder, these are all things that are moving forward and a little bit different. Yes. They've got, they've got, it's nuances to the old ways. It's nuanced to the old thing. And there's also a lot of motivational shit in there too. And it's not shit, it's good stuff. You know what I mean? But, you know, but and, I... and, then, and, then, and then you've got to look at, you know, how it compares to, you know, this could actually be a business model. It could actually be, I hate to use the phrase brokerage model, right? Yes, sir. Because we're talking about the differences or the changes and the evolution of not only the coaching model, but the business brokerage model, which actually, I mean, yeah, it can it, it can stay afloat. I don't know how what kind of deep waters it's going to go into anymore. It's just I mean, my, it, it's my thought. I mean, having been yeah. there in the, in, yeah. the, in, in the deep part of it, and you too. I mean, I was from, yeah. the, from the owner end. You you were you were from the leadership end. Coaching you know, training, right? So it's like. You know, well, you know, you know how I feel about it, man. I, I feel like Marilyn says revamping. I hear that. Uh, you know, I feel like the brokerage model and, and brokers don't throw things at me, but I, I feel like you guys will be extinct soon. Like, like put it this way. E EXP is one company nationwide. Right. And so I'm just using this as an example. I'm not saying it's better or worse or anything like that. We have one broker per state. Right, maybe two in some states that are larger or something like New York is a pretty large state, so they 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 divide it up just so that they can reach the two different models or something like that, right? But the the reality is is that like as an agent, as an active agent, like what are you going to your broker for? Like like honestly, and I'm not saying this to disrespect anyone's profession or or years in the business, but but if you look, if you took an audit of your time. As an agent, what do you use your broker for? Well, right. it's compliance, right? Because you have to have a broker, right? And so the moment that you don't need that expense line, the moment that you don't need that 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 sort of checkbox, I, I, I think that it's gonna it, it, we're gonna eliminate that role. When we eliminate that role, man, there's so there's there's another evolution of real estate. So, you know, we, we look at the evolution and, and I want to I want to pop in some some newer brokerage models that are out there. I mean, Redfin's been a while around for a while. Yep. Doesn't I mean, it really hasn't penetrated. And let's remember from years ago, you had um, Fox. Day. Fox. Okay, started in New Jersey as YHD, your home direct dot com. <laughs> yes. And, and their training was all about tell the seller. 
that the other agent from the trip typical broker is going to come in and tell them how bad we are. And that, <laughs> that was how they got a lot of business because how dare them talk people down about people. That's how they got a lot of business. Right. And then it didn't work anymore. Then you had, they died, went away. Mm -hmm. And then you had purple bricks come in a couple of years ago. And, uh, how many houses do you see built with purple bricks? Not many. <laughs> right? So now you have you have, you know, you have some 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 other companies that are going along and look at the old Realogy brands are starting to work on a cap system, believe it or not. Yep. CB is testing it out in Florida. I'm not sure about around here, but I know they are. And then you look at Keller Williams. You have Compass, which is a big tech company. Um mm -hmm. hasn't made any money yet and keeps getting investors for millions and millions of dollars. And they seem to be buying agents. And one of the things that they keep doing is they they keep them on and, and they bring in agents to bolster their stuff. I mean, they're getting big. I love the concept. I love what they're doing. They got mm -hmm. great agents, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got, like I say, you got Keller Williams, Compass, EXP, and, 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 a, and a variety of individuals, mm -hmm. right? Uh, independent. Who are doing well? I truly believe what you just said. I think I think there's going to be, you know, a major shift and a major, a major revolution. Well, well, see the thing. That, so, like, like YHD and 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 Foxtons and Purple Bricks and Redfin and all of these things and Zillow and Trulia, Trulia. The the idea is how do we eliminate the middleman, right? And most of the time, the the concept of the middleman is the agent. The, the, the one thing that they feel like they can eliminate is the agent. What I'm realizing, and, and, and once again, this is my opinion and it's speculation, but what I'm realizing is that that is to push against the real elimination that is the broker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at true elevation uh, evolution, but evolution has been pushed forth right. by being gullible. And this is what I mean, yep. right? When let's talk, I'm going to use Zillow as an example all the way through from 25 years ago. And I, and I use Zillow. I use Trilly. I use all of the tools. Right. But go ahead. Yeah. So follow this, right? So Zillow comes on and they're giving these things called Zestimates. And everybody's <laughs> talking about Zestimates. They filled a hole in what we did. Because we wouldn't yeah. tell people unless we could meet with them. So they gave a site to people. Please go to the site. We'll tell you what your home is worth. People would never drill down to find out. Let's use Bergen County for an example. We have no data from Bergen County. We're just going to say this is what it's worth. Right? <laughs> right? So Zillow comes on and MLS is saying, we're not giving our stuff to Zillow. People got to stop giving their stuff to Zillow. What happens a few years later? Zillow is being, MLSs are syndicating to Zillow. Right. They were in the beginning and 25 years ago, Realtor.com was paying MLSs to give them information. Now that it was the other way around now. Right. Yep. So let's fast forward to people saying the 2010, 2015, you know, Zillow is not really that going to be that big of a player. But what happens if they start opening offices? So my thought process was, OK, the only what's going to happen is, is that people are going to get pissed and they're going to stop syndicating to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's fast forward to this year. What happened? Zillow announces that Zillow Offers is going to be opening offices. You talked about cut out the middleman, right? So what they're doing is they're hire, hiring salaried employees, real estate licensees to work their offer, Zillow Offers, which is an online offer system, right? And what are they doing? Well, I hear Realogy stopped feeding Zillow. <laughs> Up to 30% of the market. Now MLSs are saying, well, maybe we should stop, you know, syndicating to them. That's what they now. want. <laughs> they want it to happen so they can escalate their plan. They're not well, stupid. This is evolution. The thing, but because the people thing is, are gullible all along. The gullibility. Well, see, the thing is, is that like, so w without a doubt, there are just like in every industry, there's basically two types of worker, right? Like there's the efficient and pride, like the, the person that takes pride in their work. And then there's the person that's just there for a paycheck and, you know, keeps their head down, does the minimum, et cetera, et cetera. And they, they sort of exist next to each other because they both have the same title. They're both, they're both working the same job, 
but they're right. not doing it the same way. And right. so you, you get the folks that are constantly looking for ways to service their clients and customers. They are obsessed with their business. They're obsessed with growth. They're obsessed with innovation because all it's going to do is make their clients' lives easier. They're going to service their clients more. They're going to get more of what people are looking for. And you got these other folks who literally come to work to complain, right? right? right. And so what, what happens is, is that when a Zillow or a Trulia or, or the next great name or the next great you know business push, Amazon, whatever it is, when they come along, the complainers, all they do is complain about it. That's right whether they're an agent or a broker or an owner or whatever, all they do is complain about what it's not. This agent that is obsessed with their business, obsessed with growth, obs uh, growth, obsessed with, you know, great service. And how do I give more to my clients and customers are looking for ways to work with, are looking for ways to use, are looking for ways to leverage so that their customers get more. And that is the difference. And the, the reason why I say the, the brokerage level is, is going to eventually not, you guys are good for a while, but eventually be phased out is because the, the, the system, the brokerage system is broken in a fundamental way. They are not focused on the agent. Right. They're not focused. Their, their obsession should be the agent and their the business development and how do I make this agent better? Instead, they're focused on how do I get more money, and that. So, so I want I want to I want to talk about that in a minute, but I do want to talk about one other thing. So, I want you to hold that thought. I want to talk about All right. sponsor for the day, which Please. is something that I that I've, I've put a lot of time and effort into. It's called NJHeroesProgram.com. It's all about uh, helping out our heroes. Like our heroes, who are they? They're people that protected us, people that helped us. People that work for us, people that keep the, the, the highways and byways going, bus drivers, transit workers, uh, military, military veterans, you know, police, fire, um, EMTs, nurses, doctors, teachers, all these types of people that have helped us out. So I just want to give you a little two minute blurb on what this program is all about, if that's okay with you, Seiko. Please. It's one. NJHeroesProgram.com is all about heroes. What's a hero? Who's a hero? Active military, military veterans, police and fire personnel, nurses, doctors, teachers, municipal workers, grocery store workers, and transportation workers. This is about helping heroes, these heroes, save money when buying and selling their homes. Through the New Jersey Buyer Rebate Program and Seller Negotiable Commissions, NJHeroesProgram.com saves heroes money when buying and selling their homes. I'm Dave Finale. I'm a real estate broker in New Jersey and a real estate coach helping agents nationwide. I've coordinated real estate agents and affiliated services all over the state of New Jersey to save our heroes money when buying and selling homes. We need to help them out. Heroes come in many shapes, sizes, attitudes, and jobs, right? The one thing that makes them all heroes is they helped us. One way or the other, they protected us. They've been there for us. Now I think it's our turn to be there for them. At least it's my turn. Go to NJHeroProgram.com as a hero and give us a little information so we can save you money when you buy a home. As an agent, loan officer, home inspector, attorney, or anyone aiding in home ownership, become a sponsor. To become a sponsor, there is no cost. All you have to do is give back. How easy is that? Go to NJHeroesProgram.com. I can't wait to talk to all of you. Let's go. Let's get it done. Man, so, I know that guy in that commercial, man. That guy's right, pretty cool. <laughs> so, I think that's a really important thing. If you know any heroes or you are a hero, please, you know, go to the site, check it out, and let me know how I can help people. And 
There's nobody, nobody's making any money on that site. It's just to help people. So I want to get back to the last thing you were talking about. We talked about the broker and the agent, spending time with the agent. Now, here's a question that I've had for years, and I and, and everybody answers it differently. What is the relationship supposed to be, or what should it be, or what do you think it should be between the broker and the agent? Before you go through the to your answer, some people have said they're partners. The broker mm-hmm. to the agent is that their customer, it's their client, mm-hmm. it's their worker, it's their agent. They do what I tell them to do. What I mean, in the this is the 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 old model, let's say. Let's call it the mm-hmm. the, the, the existing model that's still out there predominantly. What should it be, Seiko? I, I, if you're asking me what it should be, I think it should be a, a mentor, a guide. I think it should be as an experienced broker. The reason why it takes me so long to become a broker, the reason why there's so much criteria for me to become a broker, I should be able to turn around and show you exactly how to be successful in this business. I shouldn't have to feed you. It shouldn't be about splits. It shouldn't be about this. It shouldn't be about that. It should be about an investment of your time, energy into the agent so that that agent can grow, constantly grow. You should be looking as a broker to replace yourself. It should be constantly training your replacement, training your competition. It should be giving everything that you have so that that agent can grow and flourish and have an amazing life. Right. Why become a broker if not that? And and so I know that there's a lot of money at the brokerage level. There's a lot of money at this and that and the other thing, right? But fundamentally, most of the people that I know that get into real estate, get into real estate for some sense of altruism. I wanna help people. I wanna do for people. I wanna help people grow. The role of the broker, should just be, I want to help people, right? And the people I want to help are agents, right? So that should just be the role of the broker. The role of the broker should take that original, the original reason why they became a real estate agent and elevate that to not only do I want to help the people that are moving, but I want to help the agents to help the people that are moving. I want to make the best agents in the world. That's what I think the role of the broker should be. And, 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 uh, you started this by saying, talking about agents and, you know, making them, talking to them about the scripts, right? The scripts mm-hmm. are not for them to get, to get a seller to sign with them. It's about growing their business, growing their millions, yes. let's say, right? And that's how actually you, 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 we started this, this broadcast today, you know? So um, we've had, we, we've been able to work with a lot of people, right? And, and mm-hmm. um, we get a lot of inspiration and, and, I'm just showing a, a little comment from, from one of the people we work with here. Um, Nasi. Nasi, thank you so much for your kind words. But this is one person that we've seen change and improve and and get and, and just get out there and evolve as not only as a real estate agent, but also as a human being. And that is that is the 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 the, the thing that we work for. That I say, and it's it's in my email signature, and I, I write it every day. I help people. I just want to help people. I mean, and that's it. I mean, look, you know what? Yeah, I, I'd be honest with you. I want to make a lot of money. You know, yeah. um, that's not my, uh, well, I know I will. That's not what I'm doing anything for. I mean, I got to do something. So let's see. What is it? Is it, you know, do I want to like go out there and, 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 and make an awful lot of money? Yeah, I do. But what's the effect of it? What's going to push me? Well, the push is, to get a comment like that, right? Yeah. Have someone come in your office one day and say, it worked. It worked. It's, it clicked. I'm doing this. Right? I, I have an, there's an agent right now that we're working with that was, was she was ready to give up. She was ready to give up and, and it was frustrating her. Um, the other day she talked to me about how she's got so many offers that she's that she's like negotiating and, and offers coming in on properties that she has. She has a number of listings and it just the, the look on her face, the big old grin, like she looked like the cat that ate the canary. It, it, it was like, okay, 
That's what I'm talking about. I knew you had it in you. If people ask why we coach. That's why we coach. That's right. So that is why we coach. So as we as we wind down, we're we're, we're coming up on the hour. We, we we both have other calls and we got stuff going on. We're we're really cool. Is 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 you've received the hat, but I want to tell you today, uh, Sekou, mm-hmm. that, that you will be getting a new hat as well. Right? Oh, I get the so, new version. So you're going to get, well, actually, this is the original, right? Uh-huh. So if you don't have an original, you're going to be getting an original, right? So oh my everybody, can, all my guests come on this broadcast, and they get a hat. And that's why a lot of them come on. No, that's not true. I'm just kidding. That's one of the things I say at the end of each broadcast. Um, I want you to talk about uh, one more thing, and it's 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 something that, you, that, that we, you've been able to do and, and you've allowed me to help you with, and that's your group commitment to capping. Um, yeah, Talk about right. that and, and what that's all about. And then we can, you know, we can, we can go out from there. So I'm going to do a shameless plug. Please now, right. So my, my mission, right. I have a mission. It's to, it was to create 10 millionaires a year for the rest of my life. Right. In creating commitment to capping, it was to take agents from capping organizations uh, like EXP and KW and any other capping organization and to provide them with simple systems to get them to cap, to get them to right. max out on the, on the amount of money that they spend to in investing in their business and get the maximum amount of return. I've, I've elevated the game with my, with my mission. I want to create 10 Fortune 500 companies a year out of these, bro- out of these agents in order to have them just just change the game and just take it to the levels that we cannot even perceive of right now. So what Commitment to Capping does is a daily lead gen and accountability program that is completely dependent on the agent's commitment to their own business. It's completely dependent on them being curious and wanting to know how and being obsessed with their growth and their development. I, my challenge is to get as many agents as possible to break the system. I, 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 I recall a time in my life where I met agents that hadn't done more than two deals their whole career or two deals a year or whatever, not knowing where their money is going to come from, working two or three jobs in order to just have a real estate career. And to me, that's unacceptable. So what we do at Commitment to Capping is we take you from where you are to where you want to be. And we do it through simple, simple techniques, get together every day. We lead generate every day. We handle objections when they come up, right? (laughs) And I'm winking when I say handle objection because we just bowl through them, right? right? And then the most important aspect of it is the accountability of it, man. And and we get together and at the end of the day, and we hold each other accountable to what we say we wanted. We hold each other accountable to our dreams and our goals. And it's been beautiful, man. We went from 39. And, and like you said, you helped me to grow this. We were growing this together, right? We went from 39 people in that group to over 500 people in that group. From all companies, there's no, we, we don't do any recruiting in the group. Uh, But I will tell you this, right? One of the things that I do is I have the agent challenge their business model, whatever the business model is, including our own. Right. And I have them, I have them to, to take an audit of how much they're spending on their business uh, and what the return is, what is their investment and what is your return? And uh, it's been amazing. I love it. I love doing it. it. It's a lot of fun and we're changing lives. We are, we are, and, and and you know what's great about this broadcast, doing it with you. I mean, we've been on a couple of times, just you and me um, yeah. before. And what's great about this is I get to ask you the question. <laughs> I've been waiting for you know, a week since we decided to do this together. Say, Koo, how can I help you with your business? Send me agents that want to grow. Send me agents that are obsessed with how to do more, how to squeeze another minute out of the hour of their lives. Send me agents that, that, that you feel want more out of their business. And I, it will help me because I'm going to make them into millionaires. (laughs) Wow. 
Wow. I tell you what, <laughs> that is a great way to end it. I want to thank you Kupal, for coming on and being my guest on 121 today. Um, everybody, we've got uh, we've got a, a really special guest. Every week, every week, I gotta tell you, every week's a special guest. We have uh, another repeater coming on who was on way a couple of years ago, Rebecca Mountain. Uh, a coach from Canada who I met as a marketing specialist. Can't wait for this one, by the way. Because this is going to be really good, and 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 uh, she is a real special individual. Um, and we're going to have her on next week. And we've got we've got some other greats coming on. Um, you know, we've got Jake Kinder coming on. Uh, we've got Tristan Amuda coming on, and in the future, and 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 also, you know, others that we're we don't have definite yet. We're just trying to uh, put them together. But I want to thank you so much for coming on, and we're gonna. We're going to take it out and we're going to rock. So I want to thank everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, where is it? There it is. Yeah, it's, listen, man, that's the, this is the best part. <laughs> Here we go.